Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Um, I have a, a heavy message to share today and an instruction that I feel very, very impressed on my spirit um, to impart. And it is um, an instruction of preparation for the Bride of Christ. The Bride of Christ is both the end time uh, rapture saints as well as the tribulation saints um, and the reason I want to highlight that is because it's important to know um, which one you are which the Holy Spirit will reveal to you if you don't already know um, and while we have a similar or same mission our specific duties will differ according to the time frame that he's going to use us um, so this is very critical to understand which one you are I'm also going to be sharing, uh, toward the end of the video, um, a Spanish instruction for my brothers and sisters who don't speak English. I just feel impressed to do that, so I'm just letting you know now. Uh, toward the end of the video, I will be speaking to them, um, and you're free to share this with, with those you feel need to hear it. Um, he did give me a few scriptures for us to go over, but I also feel he's just going to share a lot while we're, while we're going through, so, um, please bear with me, um, this is not easy to share, but it's very critical, it's very vital, and though I have shared a lot on my blogs, um, specifically the Ready Bride, um, dot blogspot.com is the reference. Um, I just, I've, I've been feeling all day today and a part of the day yesterday that he wants me to actually share a video um, on, on all of this. So, um, before we get into scriptures, I think it's important to understand the timeline of the Lord's return because the Lord's return is actually um, very multifaceted. It, it's um, a lot of events that are in that time frame, um, including the rapture of his bride as well as the tribulation period and we are on the brink of these specific events happening obviously we don't know exactly when they'll happen only the father knows but he does give us signs and he does give us um, promptings of the Holy Spirit to prepare which I believe he's been doing for many of us for some time now according to what assignment he has for you um, just a little background on me specifically I um, was woken up um, in the fall of 2013 with a simple instruction to actually begin studying the end times and I didn't know um, anything about it before that time and I began in the book of Revelation little did I know that um, Bible prophecy is all over scripture and so uh, within six months a little over six months 
I began to hear the Lord differently in the spirit realm and he began to give me messages to write down um, and I came to understand that he called me to be a watchman uh, which is basically someone who uh, is sounding the alarm to his return so everything I've shared and everything I share that is in relation to his return is by his Holy Spirit and it is simply me yielding to the words that he shares in my spirit so that I can impart them to his children. Um, you may identify with this if the Lord has been speaking to you about um, these times that we're in and it is very unique to what he's called you to do and uh, I would strongly encourage you to just share whatever he tells you to share however he share he tells you to share it um, because he has been and he continues to um, wake up his people and prepare the world for what is continuing to unfold. So, um, uh, I'll break down a little bit. Um, the end time rapture saints um, are those who have been in preparation. They have been and are being sanctified and purified and in a season of wilderness coming out of the wilderness um, and that simply means that you've been in a very difficult season of surrendering your heart to Christ and letting go of your old life because he has been setting you apart for the time that we're in now so if you identify with that, if you can look at your life and see this is this is what I've been going through, this is what, what's been happening, then you are most likely, of course I would encourage you to seek the Lord specifically on it, but you are most likely an end time rapture saint. Um, and our work isn't done. Um, in fact, we are getting ready to be used in a very mighty way. Now, if you're a tribulation saint, um, you are also beginning to be pruned um, and refined so that you are ready for the time of the tribulation. Um, and while it is and it does sound scary to be here during the tribulation, um, it is a very powerful position to be in because you will be one of the final voices to preach the gospel before the Lord returns. Um, and you also will be used in a very mighty way. So I want to encourage you, if, if you are feeling like you're not sure or you know you're starting to notice some things um, I would also seek the Lord on it and ask him specifically where he has you and what he's calling you to do in this time but both are part of the bride of Christ and as I said before specific according to the assignment that he has for us Okay, so I'll go ahead and go to the book of Joel, and it's chapter 2, and we're going to begin in verse 12, and um, we're going to read uh, 12 through 17. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. 
Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. And he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants, let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should we say among the peoples, where is their God? Um, so this specific um, chapter and passage, the Lord actually gave me um, in 2014 to share with the church that I was at at the time. And it was one of the biggest um, at the time instructions to as a watchman to share what I felt the Lord was showing me and I, sh I did share it with the church um, and there's a specific instruction that is in this passage that I do believe is for the church and specifically the leaders of the churches those who are heeding the Holy Spirit's leading right now and you know 2014 was many years ago but it's this time frame that we've been in um, leading up to now and it's um, beginning in verse 15 um, I actually don't have my notes of when I was um, when he was showing me all this but um, I do remember this specific passage was an instruction for the church and it is to consecrate a fast to call a solemn assembly to gather the people consecrate the congregation assemble the elders gather the children even nursing infants let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? I actually just read through verse 17, but in essence, the instruction has been um, to be consecrated, to be set apart, and to fast and to mourn for the people and for what is coming um, and really the church overall should have been and should be doing this which is um, interceding in prayer on behalf of the people for what is coming and what is already here um, so that they may be spared on some level. Um, obviously many churches do know this and have been doing this, but as we know there are many who are not. Um, and we can also intercede on the behalf of leaders who are not um, yielding to the Spirit of the Lord at this time so that they may be prepared for their time. Okay, um... I'd like to go to... I feel like this is where he wants to go first. And that is... Um, oh, okay. Um, Jeremiah chapter 50 and 51. And 
and that is to give us um, a little bit of understanding as to what is essentially here and what is going to happen. Um, I do believe um, by revelation of the Holy Spirit that the book of Jer or Jeremiah fifteen fifty one specifically is about our nation. Um, a prophetic scripture about our nation. And these two chapters um, really do break down what is to come and perhaps even what is unfolding. So I would um, encourage you to read both of them if you feel led to study and to understand a little bit more. Um, and I'm just going to share whatever specific passages of these two chapters that he's leading me to at this time. Um, if you can, just bear with me one second. read chapter 50 um, verse 8 um, until he tells me to stop flee from the midst of Babylon and go out of the land of the Chalde Chaldeans and be as male goats before the flock for behold I am stirring up and bringing against Babylon a gathering of great nations from the north country, and they shall array themselves against her. From there she shall be taken. Their arrows are like a skilled warrior who does not return empty-handed. Chaldea shall be plundered. All who plunder her shall be sated, declares the Lord. Um, this speaks, obviously, of war and captivity. Um, which is something that the Lord has been highlighting for me again. Um, he shared this over the years, but that war is imminent. I'm going to keep going. Um, I'm actually going to jump over to Revelation 18 for a minute and read because there is a parallel that he was showing me. Um, and then I'll get into my understanding of the time frame in terms of the book of Revelation because it is sequential. Um, however, out of order it might be or appear to be. Um, so chapter 18, um, we'll, we'll begin at verse 1. After this I saw another angel coming down from heaven and having great authority, and the earth was made bright with his glory. And he called out with a mighty voice, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling place for demons, a haunt for every unclean spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable beast. For all nations have drunk the wine 
of the passion of her sexual immorality, and the kings of the earth have committed immorality with her, and the merchants of the earth have grown rich from the power of her luxurious living. Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you take part in her sins, lest you share in her plagues. For her sins are heaped with are heaped high as heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Pay her back as she herself has paid back others, and repay her double for her deeds. Mix a double portion for her in the cup she has mixed in the cup she mixed. As she glorified herself and lived in luxury, so give her a like measure of torment and mourning. Since in her heart she says, I sit as a queen, I am no widow, and mourning I shall never see. For this reason her plagues will come in a single day. Death and mourning and famine, and she will be burned up with fire for mighty is the Lord God who has judged her. And the kings of the earth who committed sexual immorality and lived in luxury with her will weep and wail over her when they see the smoke of her burning. They will stand far off in fear of her torment and say, Alas, alas, you great city, you mighty city Babylon, for in a single hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth weep and mourn for her, since no one buys their cargo anymore. Cargo of gold, silver, jewels, pearls, fine linen, purple cloth, silk, scarlet cloth, all kinds of scented wood, all kinds of articles of ivory, all kinds of articles of costly wood, bronze, iron, and marble, cinnamon, spice, incense, myrrh, frankincense, wine, oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle, and sheep, horses and chariots and slaves, that is human souls. The fruit the fr sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Just give me one second. The fruit for which your soul longed has gone from you. And all your delicacies and your splendors are lost to you, never to be found again. The merchants of these wares who gained wealth from her will stand far off in fear of her torment weeping and mourning aloud. Alas, alas, for the great city that was clothed in fine linen, in purple scarlet, adorned with gold, with jewels and with pearls. For in a single hour, all this wealth has been laid waste. And all shipmasters and seafaring men, sailors, and all whose trade is on sea stood far off and cried out as they saw the smoke of her burning. What city was like the great city? And they threw dust on their heads as they wept and mourned, crying out, Alas, alas, for the great city where all who had ships at sea grew rich by her wealth, for in a single hour she has been laid waste. Rejoice over her, O heaven, 
and you saints and apostles and prophets, for God has given judgment for you against her. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, So will Babylon the great city be thrown down with violence and will be found no more. And the sound of harpists and musicians, of flute players and trumpeters will be heard in you no more. And the craftsmen of any craft will be found in you no more. And the sound of the mill will be heard in you no more. And the light of a lamp will shine in you no more. And the voice of bridegroom and bride will be heard in you no more. For your merchants were the great ones of the earth. And all nations were deceived by your sorcery. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints. All of and of all who have been slain on earth.